Ay, ay, ay. How's it going, boo boo? Eh. It's probably more stressful than I'm letting myself think. Is it your glasses I, again? I can't do this. No, it's not my glasses. <laughs> I would just, I'm just looking around and then realizing all the things I need to do. And I just actively avoid. I was like, wow, I have got a messy room. And then where I'm actually leaving tomorrow with Allison to go be with her family for a couple right. of days. And I know that means I need to clean this room today. So then I just got overwhelmed. Listen, I love you, it's, but you, you really know. have a bad habit of scheduling trips, last minute trips right before I leave the end, right before I leave on a trip. Where are you going? Like, Connecticut for the baby shower. Oh, it's right, been right, in there right, for right, months. Right, right, right. And all of a I sudden know. it's like, oh, now we have, it's, you're really good at that. I just got to say, you Thank have you. a talent. <laughs> I do what I can. <laughs> for making uh, our schedule really complicated. <laughs> Oopsies. I'm I thought sorry. that was my job with the baby. That's my uh, look. I'm oh taking gosh. advantage of it while it's like the last thing I have. And then when you have the baby, it'll be all you. you have a Thank that? you. You're Thank welcome. you for a couple um, wrenches every now and then. Yeah, I yeah. am. I just share the a... funeral. I'm not blaming you for that. was not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that was Uncle Alan's fault. We, the Bahamas uh, was maybe like, wait, what? But the Bahamas, I will take full responsibility. <laughs> that was a mistake. That was the fucking mistake. Um, no, yeah. I should just start leaving microphones just all across the nation and just wherever like, I go, actually, I'll have I'll be prepped so we can record wherever I am. Yeah, um, actually. That would be anyway. Nice. Uh ask me why I drink before I ask why you okay. drink. Okay. Well, why do you drink M? I drink because I got in contact with Nemo's Dreamscapes. <gasps> I saw your post on Instagram. Oh, I wanted you to, I wanted to surprise you on here. I saw uh, that, but it said like red alert and all this business. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is a red alert. Yeah. I, I asked them if they, if they wanted to work together in any capacity one. And I, to be fair, like there's like no actual solid plan, but we have spoken to each other and it might happen if we can figure something connection out. Connection so. has been made. I do like that. They were like, uh, <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> I know <laughs> They were like, yeah, let's do it. They were like, what does that mean? Which I don't, like, I don't, I don't know if it'll ever court. happen, but look, all I know is that they know who I am. And honestly, that's just like, I'm already on Mount Everest. So yeah. If whatever. you're like, what is that? Nemo's dreamscapes is that thing M's mentioned a couple of times, um, that they've also gotten me really into, which is like these, uh, how do you even like ethereal, like kind of uh, how do you explain it? Like an audio scape sort it's of? Like, yeah. It's like a, it's a soundscape. It's like an soundscape, ambiance. Soundscape. It's an yeah, ambiance, um, yeah. but it's a whole YouTube channel where you can click through different videos and they're pretty much, they pretty much all have the same theme, but the, the way that they're titled is what really caught me in the beginning where it was <laughs> yeah. like, you're in a train car in the thirties and it's storming outside and you're in the middle of a dream. And it's like, whoa, and you're, like, <laughs> you're reading the page three of the newspaper as a trolley walks by to deliver yeah. food on the train. It's like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> but they're so, and it's like, my favorite is when they're like really old timey music. So it's like, it sounds like, um, a uh, phonograph like playing music yeah. in the background and there's like rain it's just like very soothing and I feel like when I write now I always play one and it just kind it's of so it's so easy to uh it's like just a white noise but it's always such a clever white noise I was listening to one yesterday where it was like uh you're you're taking a snooze on the couch and there are crickets chirping outside because it's summer dusk and I'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> it's like you're right. Uh, uh, but anyway, I look at you making all these brand connections. You're like Tony's Chocoloni. Well, so Tony Chocoloni was, I think Tony's the one that re reached out. You you had we just had our own conversation. We were like, oh, like you reach out to people, and I was like, I don't think I do. And then I was like, maybe I actually do it more. Than I I'm had aware. no idea. I feel like we have such different approaches sometimes to social media, and it we don't know it about each other or even about ourselves maybe. Cause like, we just don't think about it, but like, I found out like, cause we did an interview and this person was like, Oh yeah. Em, I found out you reached out to me like a year ago. And I was like, wow. I'm just like reaches out to people via DM. And I just don't ever think to do that. It's kind well, of smart. 
the worst part is I did not remember reaching out until they responded a year later. And then I went, whoa, this is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> and now you have an actual like interview scheduled. So it's like you have an actual business relationship I know now. We ended up being on their show. And then I was like, well, I guess it worked. I guess I manifested it. But also, wow, I wish it didn't take a year for a response. But anyway, it's fine. It's fine. It's I never no think fault, to but... do that. I feel like I'm just not proactive in that way. Like if I, I will... enjoy something, I'll just like let it sit. I will say it has not been super successful. I've gotten, I, Tony reached out to me, I think big T as I call him now. Uh, and (laughs) that worked out super well, but I've like reached out to like Pendleton blankets. They basically were like, no, thank you. Well, see, Part of the problem that I've noticed with these social media things is that if you already give them a lot of credit, there's Mm -hmm. like not as much incentive for them to like I know participate, but with Tony, clearly that wasn't an issue for them. Well, but I, also I don't understand. Like, I just don't know anything about like social media and like, you know, making a, like partnering with anyone because it's like, why wouldn't you want to bring someone on that already clearly actually genuinely loves your product? Like at least Tony, they knew I love Tony's chocolate. Maybe but, like, it's like, sorry, I keep sh- every time the camera moves to me, I'm in a different position. Cause like my back is just in so much pain. It's a fun little tour the slowest tour on <laughs> earth. Here's my wallpaper. Doing. Yep. <laughs> I'm just shifting. So you're going to see the janky air conditioner in the corner. Um, yeah. I don't know. I wonder if it's like because the only people I've ever worked with brand wise, like it's basically just discovery plus now, but it's cause they emailed me like through Instagram. Mm. They just like hit contact. Nobody, I think Tony's the only person who's ever like actively reached out to me, to be clear. I, I like, I I've reached out to Starbucks. I was like, Hey, London fog was cooking. Okay. And that's, they, a, okay that's a big and reach. They were Starbucks like, we're a, a we're a multi-million dollar company. We don't need you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I, sure they're like a billion dollar company, not a multi-million. The dollar point company. is I tried, but like, uh, yeah, we've got Tony and that's all we need, I guess. Well, <laughs> Maybe um, Nemo's dreamscapes. I mean, that's a, that's a good one. I feel like they're very, they're niche enough to be like a perfect fit. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like, um, it's hard with these kind of reaching out to people. I'm looking up how much Starbucks is worth. Cause I'm abused by it. Um, and uh, let me guess, I'm going to say 3 billion, 30 billion. So you're <laughs> a little bit off with your multi-million dollar, 30 billion. And it's Starbucks. It's like the biggest company in America. Not really, but you know, close. I, I just didn't even, like they're I just probably bigger than process. McDonald's. I can't even process that amount of money. Well, no. I mean, neither can I, but <laughs> how much is Jeff Bezos worth? And why are you doing this? It's, it's not a good, a fun game. It's, it's it's a bad, sad game. It's a sad game. Um, $193 billion. Wow. He has, wow. That's like, what? Like five Starbucks. That's insane. (laughs) Five Starbucks. (laughs) Okay. Anyway. Uh, anyway. So uh, I don't know what the point of this was anymore, but, um, oh, I'm excited for you with Nemo's dreamscapes. That's exciting. Oh yeah. Thank you. And my, my, I did get, um, if you saw my unboxing, I got a box of free chocolate. So, I mean, like, that's what I'm worth, but I'm excited about it. So, hey, that's a good Listen, time. I got three months of Discovery Plus and now I just ah! pay for it. So, like, I'm happy. <laughs> I know. I, like, as Tony Chocoloni came in with, like, they gave me, like, a package, like a like a care package, which was super nice. And Allison walked in the door with, like, actual bars that we purchased from the store in the same day. So, Aww. it was like... <laughs> You're like anyway, a full household brand name. Yeah. We literally have like a hundred bars here. It's crazy, but I don't, it's like, I'm trying to recreate Willy Wonka's factory. You're doing uh, a great job. Why do you drink Christine? Besides oh. the fact that <laughs> Jeff Bezos is worth that much money. <laughs> That's kind of now the new, I mean, it's always been the reason, but now it's kind of just added on. It's overshadowed everything else. Um, why do I drink? Um, well, um, I, I've gotten to a point where I'm really embittered toward this child because it is literally wedged, ready. wedged into my ribs and lungs to a point that like, I can barely function. It hurts so much. Um, I have a hunch. You're going to be bitter about this child for many, many, many years <laughs> for uh, different reasons. Yeah. I hope for- that that, I hope there's a, at least a delay. Like I don't want them to be a day old and me being like, ah, you know, but I'm a little bit over it. I don't like, I know some people are like, I love being pregnant. It's so magical. And I'm like, it doesn't feel good to me. It doesn't feel nice. Like, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's not enjoyable most of the time, but you know, here we are. Like, I think there's probably going to be spurts in between your bitterness. I think there's going to be like, Oh, 
they have a bunch of fingers and toes and then they're going to like poop on you. And then you'll be like, ah, oh, not again. You know, I think it just keeps happening over and over. <laughs> That's your view for, of parenting <laughs> for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I feel like if a baby pooping on you is the most embittered, you'll be towards somebody like you're living I, the dream. I'm very interested to hear about your first story with them having like a blowout. I think that'll be pretty funny. Oh, I mean, I changed my sister's diaper from the day she was born till like whenever she stopped wearing diapers. So it's going to be like nothing to me. I feel like I've changed so many freaking diapers in my life that it's not going to phase me. Blaze might be like thrown, but is there anything that you're more worried about? Like something you just like feel completely unprepared for? Like something as small as like changing diapers. Is there anything that's like really daunting to you? I am, I'm scared of walking around with the baby, like down the stairs and stuff. I just feel like they're so Ooh. fragile and small. I'm like scared of dropping them. You know, that's a good one. That's a good <laughs> but one. Just, but I feel like that's, you know, I just got to be more careful than I usually am. Anyway, uh, anyway, what, I don't know why I drink except that I'm in pain and it's hard to sleep, but you know, again, what I get part to sleep hurts? In, so. Like, I, I know ribs. you said your ribs, but is it all always your ribs or is it just like right now your ribs and later it'll be something else? Um, lately it's been the ribs for several days. So I think that's the new hot spot. Mm. It's like, wow, that must be fun. Um, fun experience. And I think eventually the baby's supposed to drop down to your pelvis before mm. you give birth. So that, they're not that in makes your lungs. Sense. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> so I'm waiting for that. Cause apparently it means suddenly you can breathe a lot better, but it doesn't oh. mean now they're on your bladder. So you have to pee a lot more, which I can't fathom since I already pee every five minutes, but, um, Oh my gosh. Fun fact. Anyway, this is so boring. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, it oh. just doesn't feel great. And uh, otherwise, you know, uh, live in the dream blaze and I are touring the birthing place tonight. Hmm. Um, so that's fun. Know. They give you a little tour. I know I booked a little tour and they're going to show us the rooms and stuff so I can mentally prepare for what to bring and what not to bring <laughs> and all that good stuff. Um, wow. You just sneeze. Bless you. I coughed. And my oh. coughs sound like sneezes. As I I'm never can older. tell, you know, <laughs> I can't either anymore. Sometimes people will be like, bless you. And I'll be like, Oh, thank you. I did. Did I sneeze? Bless you too. <laughs> yeah. And also, and also with, with you. you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Your turn. Anyway. Anyway. Oh, wait. One last thing that I keep needing to bring up yesterday was Mooney's birthday and I'm just so proud of him and I love him so much. That's, that's all happy birthday. Well, Moonshine. How, how long have you had Moonshine now? Um, we got him in November of last year. Whenever that really? Was. It's only been that long? Yeah, because Feels- we got him after Halloween. He was like a post-Halloween cat. I wanted a black cat. Hmm. Um, I thought it was longer than that, but that's so sweet. Nope. And he was three months old. So yeah, uh, he was born in August and he's a year old now. And I made a little post on Instagram about how he takes showers with me, washes, watches a toilet flush, um, drowns all oh. his toys in his water bowl. Um, so he's just like a little, little, I don't know if he's well-adjusted, probably not. Um, but no one know. in your home is no, certainly but... not. If they were, that'd be <laughs> concerning, but, um, yeah. So that's Fun. all. Happy birthday moonshine. And does that mean in a couple months, Mr. Geo's having his little birthday? That's correct. The Scorpio, <laughs> it'll be right after the baby's born. So he'll be like, actually remember This is about me. <laughs> he's like don't worry i actually rain here but thank you it's nice that you stop by it's been fun for you to have a few weeks to yourself but my birthday's he's back. gonna be six. Oh fuck yeah he's gonna be old six he's years old big boy. he's he a will big boy be. oh my goodness all right well this uh this story i want to tell you by the way has to do with potentially your baby because it's a creepy little child yes That's- I love so. creepy little children. Let's do uh, it. Also, it's a creepy little child we feel, we feel sad for. So there is that. Oh, no. There's that caveat. Okay. But this is the story of, and I'm saying it in the most horrid American accent, even though it's Italian, Azarina. So okay. That's the story a pretty name. Azarina. So this Azarina is a spirit that happens to be in one of the most haunted castles, but she really like overtakes every story. Cause I tried to do a whole, my, my whole topic was originally going to be the castle and everything oh, you could find in the castle she's the protagonist. Yeah. And every single article, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The castle is really, 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 really haunted with so many things. It's insane. But as arena and I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay. Queen B we get yeah, it. Taking the stage. So I don't actually know in how many other ways 
I don't know in full detail how else this castle's haunted, but Azarita is <laughs> alive and well over there. So, well, uh, sorry. she's alternately alive. As well. <laughs> so it's uh, one of Italy's most famous castles and also one of the most haunted castles, the Castello di Montebello, um, which is now a museum in Rimini. I think I saw on one website, I think they do wine tastings there. I'm, I'm not I sure mean, if that's accurate, but I thought it was a fun right. fact. So For a town in it, Italy? Oh, at the castle, at, you mean? At the castle. Oh, yeah. fun. So okay. It's a museum that I think, I think does like has a wine bar or something there. I'm very into um, that. Yeah. Well, I wanted to throw it in, but then I couldn't find it anywhere else. So, but yeah, you're right. It's literally Italy. I've in my mind that everyone's just always carrying a glass of wine. So, correct. Um, my castle allegedly has a lot of other spirits and activity. Apparently there's lore about like elves and there's like, um, even like a hidden treasure story. Um, Ooh. I'm sure there's other ghosts involved, but again, Azarina came onto the scene and everyone was forgotten. So, uh, <laughs> The history of Azarina starts in 1370 when Gwendolina Malatesta was born. Sure, 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 sure. Gwendolina Malatesta. That's beautiful. Very look, Mark M. Schultz. Okay. <laughs> M. Um, Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't so, really like put I didn't really yeah, that really adds some perspective there, huh? One one has like music behind it. <laughs> and it's M. Um, Schultz. <laughs> you know, and it's me. It's um so Gwendolina Malatesta was born in 1370. She was the uh child of the Lord and his lady uh of Montebello. So they lived in the castle and she was their first kid. Um, she, when she was born though, she, uh, had albinism. So oh. for people who don't know, that is when you don't have any pigment or like melanin production in your skin, hair and or eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you're like incredibly pale and like your hair is white or maybe like a really light shade of blonde. Your mm -hmm. eyes are sometimes a different color. Um, but in the middle ages, albinism was in uh basically an omen of misfortune yeah for let me town. guess something terrible just like being left-handed <laughs> yeah yeah basically right. i mean it was a lot of people uh who who dealt with this were accused and murdered for witchcraft Jeez. like i mean all this kind of stuff so when uh gwendolina was born um she especially because she was born to someone in power they were right. afraid that either she was going to get attacked or people were going to be worried about their 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 community and sure. being in danger and so they decided that they were going to keep her as a secret fun no 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 this never and they ends were, well and they were going to protect her from the angry townspeople um so again they named her gwendolina uh because this was the Italian version of Gwendolyn, which apparently in Gaelic means fair. So oh. at least they described her well, but also if they're trying to be discreet, like that's like, <laughs> <laughs> like your baby's name is fair and also is so fair. You won't show her to the world. So your baby that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and so, uh, by the way, her name might also be Adelina or nicknamed Deline. Um, apparently there was a priest around the year 1600 who is the one who really pushed this story of Azarina, but used a different name in it. And so we don't know which name is actually the true one and which, and if the other one was inspired or something, but Azarina is the name that she's known by, but some stories. Wait, so Gwendolina is you, Azarina? Gwendolina becomes Azarina. Yeah. Oh. I just haven't, I just haven't gotten there yet. Sorry. This note probably came too early, but Gwendolina becomes Azarina but they also refer to her in some other versions as Adelina. It's a bunch of names you that could either be true or not true, but the one that we care about is Azarina. Okay. And she be she becomes named Azarina because uh so she never left the house, but while she was inside, she picked up like so many insane awesome skills. Uh, where like she was super intelligent for her age. She could play instruments without Aww. actually like being taught how to like read music um she was a seamstress a really well se a really good seamstress she taught herself all about like herbs and plants and how to like create medicines wow. and dyes out of them um 
Apparently she hummed in French, which how do you do that? Actually, yeah, I do that too. I can do that. Um, I have a cling on, which is crazy, but um, <laughs> Wait, you want to hear it? Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay. pretty uh, first, for a second I was like, am I an asshole for like making the Klingon joke? Like, can you <laughs> someone actually hum in French? Yes, I just okay. played it for you. <laughs> right, you're right, you're right. I can also yes. sew really well. But, oh, yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I've seen you take curtains and nail them directly to the wall. So <laughs> I've seen what you do with fabric and it's I not know. good. <laughs> Don't make fun of fabrics and cloth like that. <laughs> so um, sorry. So like fun fact, when I say all these things that like she learned how to like make dyes out of plants and shit, she was like still a child. Like wow. she was still a little kid. Um, and so when her parents realized how incredible she was, they felt bad that she, they were like holding her hostage in this yeah. capsule and they were like, okay, let's give her a disguise. And that way she can go out into the world oh, and like boy. be awesome. So they used uh, this, uh, apparently it's called a guada plant okay. and it, they thought, okay, we can at least dye her hair black. And then people just think she's super pale, but like her hair will be black. Um, and fun fact, this plant is what they, uh, I don't know if they still use it, but more recently it was used for the color of jeans for denim. Oh, interesting. So apparently with her hair, I don't know if it was because of the albinism or it was just for some other reason, the plant and the dye itself didn't work against her hair okay. and like it like chemically wouldn't stay in and mm. become jet black. Um, and so since it is also used for denim, you can guess where this is going. Her hair ended up accidentally being blue. Oh, I was like, I cannot guess where this is. Going. Her hair yeah. becomes jeans. <laughs> she's like, she's she's <laughs> the inventor of jeans. I don't know. She's the original <laughs> Wrangler. Um, <laughs> so, apparently, and there was apparently no way to get the dye out, so she was just left at, at the moment for blue hair, and so she ends up getting the nickname Azarina, which means the little oh, blue one. Oh, I see okay mm -hmm. i get it nickname got it got it got yeah it. Makes sorry sense. i that one uh bullet came a little too early but um so even though the main story is that regardless whether or not her name was adelina or gwendolina it ends up she ends up being known as azarina because of her blue hair got it. but then there's a whole other uh skepticism behind this because apparently even with that plant at the time, the items that she could have used to make dye for her hair couldn't have gotten her hair all the way to blue. It would have been like at best green. So there's a whole theory of like, oh, this story can't be true because there's no way this girl had blue hair. And thus there would have been no way her name was Azarina. You know, they don't know that. Maybe her hair just had a certain because of the pigmentation issue maybe the green turned blue who knows and maybe it was yeah or maybe it was teal and we went with the green yeah, side the and they were side. Like, yeah i mean come on anyway just giving you the facts that seems like friend. a really nitpicky like like skepticism like that's what you're gonna cling on to cling on to uh, <laughs> hey i'm in that um, <laughs> i should have i should have hummed that sorry <laughs> i would have understood nobody else would have though <laughs> so uh yeah and again like maybe it was because the her her hair works differently maybe there's like chemically it just you know, reacted differently or maybe she was like a five-year-old genius who was so good at plant dyes she created blue and maybe, nobody else could right like, who knows um but so now to i guess really protect her because now she stuck out like a sore thumb even more a quote they like locked her away or made sure she stayed in the closet in the closet lol in the castle wow what a, ter what a Whoa, twist <laughs> that was freudian Yikes. um so uh, they were they decided that they were going to keep her locked in the castle as before but now they're even giving her guards in case like anyone oh. sees her from a window or something i don't know oh my gosh but um so yeah she's like now extra protected by two guards fun fact their names were dominico and ruggiero Aww. Um, and so she's just a little kid with blue hair walking around the castle. She's got two guards. So far, it sounds like the life. Like it sounds like yeah, she's got that's like bodyguards. Eloise at the plaza at that point, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but like make it punk with her blue hair. I love it. Um, so then June 21st, 1375, the summer solstice, 
I don't know if this part's true. I only saw this on one source and I don't know if someone's trying to like make this story have more flowery fluff to it, or maybe this is legitimate and no other site seemed to cover this. <laughs> but on the summer solstice, apparently her parents would tell her, oh, this is the day where fairies come to visit good kids and ask them to grant you a wish. Uh, uh-huh. So I guess she was like waiting around all day for the, the fairy to stop by, you know? um from being in the closet uh, that i just mentioned so yeah right oh the fairies right yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. uh haha gay joke okay so so i don't know if that part has anything t- i didn't see that anywhere else about the fairies i okay. just thought oh that's cute but i don't know if that's legitimate or well, not. maybe they just took it kind of like um oh that is like a tradition back then like I'm assuming like people are maybe they're assuming that that's what happened since that was like a tradition or something I don't know yeah I have no idea but I I threw it in because if it's like it if it's a an actual part to the story I wanted to keep it in but so Azarina was sitting uh, by the window all day listening to people outside partying because it was the summer solstice um allegedly waiting for the fairy to arrive and she was playing with uh a ball she was bouncing a ball oh no she did not jump out the window. Okay. I know what the, I know what oh that god. sounds like. Oh my god! Um, okay, <laughs> I was like, no, don't tell me. Okay, sorry. no, she's just playing with the ball. But you know what's we again another a random source that I, I didn't see this anywhere else. But some people said that she was playing with a ball that she made out of rags, like which is so sad. Like, <laughs> like she just had like a musical, like an aunt, orphan Annie situation, <laughs> like a little cloth tumbleweed basically. Yeah. You'd I think don't... that like being in a castle <laughs> and being like the child of royalty that like, at least they'd give you a ball to play with. Like, uh, yeah, they should at least feel guilty enough to give you a, a legitimate toy, but they, somewhere it said like uh, made of rags that she like, as a, a professional seamstress at five, she had made the rags herself a, into a, a ball. Oh, they were. Pro- okay. Then it, good point. They were probably like a professional belt. They were probably like a real volleyball and she had just like sewed them together to look. Yeah. It was like yeah. actually probably like a, uh, like a volleyball, but she just like made a bunch of doilies to cover it or something. <laughs> it's just a lace volleyball. Uh, <laughs> she created herself. So I don't think it was a a rag ball because it the all the stories keep saying like the ball was bouncing around and I'm pretty sure rags don't bounce. That seems like not the kind of fabric I know of, but again, I'm no professional seamstress. So maybe it's like a, a latex rag. I'm not sure. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. We could get crazy with it. And you know, 1375, we were just riddled with latex rags. Just like balls. rubber, yeah, all sorts yeah. of fun experiments. So uh anyway. If it were a story about the a ball made of rags, the story goes that the wind picked up the ball of rags, but in every other story it went, the ball she was bouncing bounced away from her. So okay. you take your pick at which version you'd like Got to it. run with. Um, and so anyway, she ran after it down the hall and uh, I guess the ball bounced somewhere near the basement because uh, her two guards, uh, Domenico and Rogerio, heard a scream <gasps> near the ladder going down towards the basement. So they run to go check on her, but she was never seen again. You tricked me. You made it sound like nothing bad was going to happen out of this fun I game. said she wasn't going to jump out of a window. Yeah, you That's really used specific words there. Semantics. This is what I'm talking about okay. with semantics. Okay, my friend. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, just yeah, bullied yeah, me yeah, with yeah. semantics. I, yeah, I, okay. Yep. Here I am professional <laughs> gaslighter. Just, <laughs> just throwing you for a loop. Professional okay. gaslighter. I like how she's like a seamstress <laughs> and all this stuff. And we're just fucking professional gaslighters and semantics complainers. She made a rag ball bounce. You tell me she's not a professional. Okay. <laughs> Either bounce could- or float. So like something like really that it shouldn't be doing. <laughs> He could, and she hummed in French the whole time. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, they heard a scream and That's she really was awful. never found again. Jeez. So the guards looked for her. The family looked for her. They looked not only all around the castle, but apparently in like the little tunnels of the castle. Um, and in a sick twist of false hope, which I guess is what you would call me telling the story. Um, <laughs> and a sick twist of false hope. One of the guards, while looking for her, heard her voice shout out. Uh, like papa i'm here my rat my ball like what pa- papa i'm here my ball dot 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 wait why why is that a sick twist of hope because even though he heard her voice she was not there <gasps> 
So eventually, Azarina's guards were put to death for negligence. For their <gasps> whole job was to watch. Not the Rogerio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and theories to what actually happened to her are that the first one, she was actually a witch and vanished. Oh, for okay. God's sake! Okay. The others was that she could have actually legitimately the castle by herself at five and nobody noticed the like blue haired super pale kid that represents bad luck and she just like made out like a bandit or they did see her and they did something and hurt her and oh, no sure. one ever found her again the other one is that she was kidnapped by someone who found out about her when she went down mm-hmm. to the basement and another is that her father set her up for a murder because she was a setback to his reputation and career no so uh, any of those are plausible. I'm sure there's other, you know, things that could have happened too. But she today, to this day, is said to haunt the castle. And she's heard laughing or crying in the halls. And apparently people have seen flashes of blue. People have seen an apparition of her holding a ball. No one has made clear if it's um, made of cloth or not. Um, <laughs> That's all I and want other- to know. <laughs> it's all I want. And others have heard her running around or again, calling for her dad. So she just, van- <clears throat> so she just van- vanished. Just it's vanished. not like she was found dead at the bottom of the stairs or something. Nope. And I Ooh. wonder if, I, I wonder if they couldn't like call the police or something and say like, we lost our kid because they didn't even like know that the kid was and born. Were there police? I mean, this is 13 something. I don't know. Some a night they didn't call a night. Well, I'm assuming that the search party probably had all sorts of, uh, you know, rather intelligent or high up people. But if I she's guess gone, I, they didn't. They nobody found her. Is sad. where we end up. So, um, but yeah. So that's how she haunts the castle to this day. People see her apparition. They hear running, crying, poor baby, uh, laughing. Uh, her calling for her dad i th- i'm sure they've also heard a ball bouncing around or floating in the wind <laughs> and um, <laughs> the main legend though is that every five years on the summer solstice <gasps> which is the day she died um she will appear and so <gasps> that it specifically means every five years when a year ends on zero or five which is so nice for people that like probably have some like version of OCD. Can you imagine if it was like every five years, but it starts on if every year that ends on a two or a seven. Like it's, yeah, it's like a completely, so like an odd number. Yeah. <laughs> so it's because, I think it's because either because she died when she was five or because the year she died was 1375. I don't know. I don't know why, but every five years, if the year ends on a zero or five, the, and, uh, the summer, she appears on the summer solstice. Maybe she's like replaying her <laughs> life of being up until five oh. every year. And then on when she dies, she's, it's like her death day again. She's literally on a lifetime loop. cycle. <gasps> oh my God. Wow. I don't know. Oh my God. Wow. Listen, okay. That's know. actually like, I don't Making know if it's a up. solid theory, but it's, I mean, there's there's no way it's more or less right than get, what other people are it thinking. might get carried away by the wind but for now we'll take it <laughs> so uh since it, she only shows up on years it was zero or five when the castle itself became a museum in 1990 uh ever since then 90 1990 95 2000 2005 2010 there has been investigators there looking for her on the summer solstice. Wow. Um, Especially the university of it's spelled like baloney. Is it baloney? Bologna. Bologna. Okay. Uh, Thank you. (laughs) Baloney. I I knew it was wrong. Uh, Especially the university of Bologna who they have since 1990, they have come every five years to investigate. Um, So in 1990, the investigation team caught audio of potential crying, of poten- a little girl Aww. potentially crying, which apparently they, like, people know now is, like, the sound. You can hear the sound, re- like, the recording itself um, if you go on a tour there. Um, like, they, I guess, you know, they already had it recorded, and so the university left it with the castle, and so now if you go on tours, they will show you that audio. Wow. Um in 1995, they also got, they came back and got audio of bells, a toy ball bouncing. So that uh-huh. confirms one theory. It might answer the question. A girl's voice saying mom, which Aww. I'm confused by because like, 
in the 13th and like 14th century Italian, would you say mom? Or no, would you say like, and I don't think you would even say mama. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine it'd be like mama or something. Yeah. And then in 2000, apparently like in real time, they heard a little girl crying, but I don't know if they got audio for it. Um, in 2005, they heard a voice uh, that said the name Alasio. Okay. Okay. And then very oddly, here's a quote because it just sounds so out of character for the story. They also <laughs> heard in 2005, quote, a chorus of voices chanting Belial, which is the old Hebrew word for the devil. <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> that so, can't be good. <laughs> a bunch of voices just chant, chant, like chanting the devil's name is what they got. Hmm. Out of nowhere, like we were all wondering, like this seems like the nicest version of a ghost possible where it's like, oh, just playing with her ball, got blue hair, cool little kid. And now it's just like the devil, the devil, you know? And also there's like ancient rituals. Yeah, what? Yep. So anyway, that's what they got in 2005. Uh, in 2010, I don't think they, if they got something, I don't know about it, but other people have also investigated outside of just the, the university of Bologna. There's a team literally called ghost hunters, Rome. I love that. Um, and they have, so on their team is someone named Danielle Cipriani, who is in my mind, Italian bagel bites, um, <laughs> yes, it's bagel bites with Italian seasoning. And then we've got <laughs> it does good. <laughs> Alessio, Alfredo, and Walter, because there's always gotta be a Walter. Walter, why is there always a Walt? And when they investigated, this is translated from Google. So wish me luck. But um wish me is, luck, actually. <laughs> I did I went through it and and like paraphrased. So I'm not reading the actual things, but according to Google translate, these are the, the things that happened to them. So they, uh, when they first got into the castle, they set up eight different cameras in the most active rooms, including the room where Azarina vanished or where they think she vanished somewhere near the basement. And when checking out the room, the door in the basement had higher electromagnetic levels than the rest of the castle. And it began to vibrate when they got near them or when Ooh. they got near the door. And they used an EMF detector, the one with the lights that go mm -hmm. from green to red based on intensity. And they asked the spirit to turn off the lights in the machine because I guess it was all the way to red. And they watched the machine go down all the way tick, to green. Tick, tick, tick. Yep. Uh, so that was an intelligent response. Um, later that night, while they were all sitting with the monitors up in one room, just like looking at what the cameras were seeing, they heard a loud scream. And when they checked the monitors in one room, one of the cameras picked up that in Azarina's room where she vanished, one of the investigators in there like fell over and collapsed in the room <gasps> and was seemingly having a seizure. Oh no. When they ran over to him to see if he was okay, uh, one of them had an EMF detector in their hand and it was spiked as soon as she got in the room. And when he came to, he didn't know who people were for 15 minutes until he started behaving normally again. To be fair, this could have literally just been like a seizure or something. <laughs> like, a, like right. could have nothing to do with the castle. It could have just been like really awkward timing. Yeah. But that's like arguably the scariest thing I found about Azarina is that it happened in the room she vanished. Um, but it also does seem out of character because she seems to like not have ever caused issues like that before it yeah. could be one of the other ghosts that never even got a chance to be mentioned because as yeah, it, it seems like there's other shit going on too yeah yeah i mean the, the castle's been around like at least since the 1300s i think i saw on one website it's been around since the fourth century so cool, like cool 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 I'm pretty sure there's other ghosts there and maybe they're like, Hey, if you want to really ghost hunt, like I'm here, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. So who knows? Or it could have really been a medical emergency. Fun fact in 2020, there was a horror movie about Azarina that came out and it was shot in the castle itself. And weird things happened during filming, including oh, the director getting it, including the director getting an unknown illness, or it could have been COVID. We don't know. An unknown uh, <laughs> illness in 2020. That's yeah. Nothing to mess around with. <laughs> and at, apparently an actor got injured in a weird way. But anyway, it was there is a movie filmed about Azarina that was filmed in the castle. How wild is that though? Like that as the little girl, you died in 13 something. And then like every five years, you're just replaying, replaying. And then like eventually in 2020 of all, like so much later, they're like filming a video about or a movie uh, yeah. about you. You probably don't even can't grasp what's going on. That just is such a wild thought. It's, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Suspension yeah. of time. I don't know. 
I wonder how, I wonder as a ghost who's been around since the 1300s, if you see someone come in from 2020, are you like, oh, you look like how, like what, how do you gauge how much time has passed? Yeah, as a ghost? And like, do you, or do you just think you're still living the same time? Like, I, guess, I mean, I guess it depends. Cause remember what was that? It was the, the hotel in, in Fort Worth where like half the ghosts knew what year it was and half of them thought it was still like the forties or something. Oh my God. Like some of them knew it was 2020 and some of them thought like Eisenhower was president or something. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> Uh, fun fact, uh, and I'm going to leave on this is that the castle's mascot is an albino peacock. Oh, that's fun. Fact, it's a nice little tie into Azarina. Like, it is like albinism and also the blue of the peacock. So, oh, wait, that's anyway. so true. I didn't think of that. I wonder if the peacock's name is Azarina. That's but kind of cute. Anyway, if you ever wanted to go check it out, it is the Castello di Montebello. I really so, like that story. Em. Yeah. And that's it's the story different. Azarina. How's Arena? I, ex- I expected the story to be longer and have like more ghost information, but she really just stole the show. So I mean, it sounds go. like that's what she's good at. That's what she's best at. Like, leave her be. She she was alive for five years and like <laughs> she- had no friends. And like the fairy never showed, by the way. So honestly, all she wanted was to wait for that fairy, play with her homemade ball of rags. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe dye her hair with all of the herbal science she's been learning. You know, I like, love that they're like, let's dye her hair. And they're like, oh shit, now it's blue. <laughs> like, they just I know. can't get it's it like, right. You got what you wanted, kind of. Like, Poor she baby. definitely looks different. <laughs> oh, anyway, there you wow. have it. What a sad and interesting story. Um, so has Bagel Bites ever gone there? Probably not, right? I didn't see anything. Sounds I don't like know. The University of Bologna has like a hold on this place. They were like, we've got ghost hunters roam and that's all we need. Yeah. If GHR <laughs> is here, you don't need to step in. Thank you though. They, uh, yeah, no, I haven't heard anything about it, but then again, if it's just like one, ale- allegedly one after like centuries, allegedly one ghost who is allegedly kind, it's almost like he would just not even be interested in going. So. <laughs> it's allegedly kind. Yeah. Wow. Well, that was good. Em. I liked it. Thank you. Well, Emothy. I have a story. It feels like it fits your theme, your theme, not your theme, but like it's about two sisters. It so is okay. Their names are Alexandria and Anastasia. So like I feel like it sort of fits. Uh, an Azarina. As an Azarina, exactly. Yeah, like, you know, it's kind of like the song in the beginning of The Little Mermaid when all of Ariel's sisters are singing about themselves and they all sing their name like ariel has six older sisters and they all start with an a and they're all just going down the line singing their own name it could be like anastasia alexandria azarina and ariel oh i totally thought you were literally gonna say it's like the song gasolina and so i was like (laughs) everybody azarina (laughs) i don't know that's where my head went and i couldn't pull myself out in time to, to think about the little mermaid so i apologize Apparently, no, you're okay. My references are from 2005 and yours are from Mine are the, the from 90s. 89. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, everybody, Azarina. This is the story of the Maui Yoga Twin case. Okay. It's a lot of words, but they'll make Say sense eventually. Maui, like in mm-hmm. Hawaii, yoga twin mm-hmm. case. Okay. I don't know what to do with any of those words yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> it feels like i it could go a lot of directions so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it uh i'm just gonna let you do your job and i'm gonna sit back and do my job and just just embrace the story okay great <laughs> fantastic so are you oh no wait are you prepared later to tell us the size of your baby yes or, absolutely okay am okay. i prepared i listen my apps are at the ready always don't worry <laughs> okay perfect <laughs> Okay, so May 29th, 2016, 37-year-old twins Alexandria and Anastasia Duval plummeted off a 200-foot cliff in Maui, Hawaii while in their Whoa. SUV. Is that Whoa. what you expected to happen? And no, and even if I did, it was not going to be that immediate. It was not like I thought I had like a little Surprise. bit of time to banter <laughs> before it got really sad. Okay. Well, we'll have some bantering, don't worry. Um Miraculously, Alexandria, who was driving, survived the crash, but her sister Anastasia died upon impact. And apparently there's a show on Oxygen called Accident, Suicide, or Murder. 
which um, is exactly what it says in the title. And they try to figure out if it was an accident, suicide or murder on the show. Oh, hey, that's, you know, straightforward. I appreciate it. You know, you know, what? at a certain point, <laughs> someone who was pitching that show who said like, this is the title of it. You didn't even have to do the rest of the pitch. They, they were probably up. just saying this is the working title. And they were like, we don't need to come up with anything to right? yeah, probably <laughs> like, we'll yeah, just yeah, call yeah. it that. Um, so at the time, Alexandria was charged with second degree murder of her sister, Whoa. but I know it's intense. Um, but some had speculated that there was no way Alexandria could have expected to survive the wreck, which also makes sense if you're plummeting off a 200 foot cliff. Mm-hmm. So they didn't know if this was intended to be a double suicide or just an accident. So okay. Alexandria and Anastasia Duval were born in 1978 in Utica, New York. Shout out mm-hmm. to the office. Um, but their names were <laughs> Allison and Anne. So they changed their names later. It's like your Azuria thing again, or whatever her name is. So that's now we've got five sisters that start with an A. We just need one more and then Ariel, yeah. and then we'll yeah. have all seven daughters of Triton. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> you um, get it. I, I watched that movie maybe once as a child or a few times, and I just don't remember any of it. So what a shame. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. So they were born as Allison and Anne. I don't know how to pronounce their last name. D-A-D-O-W, Dadow, I assume. D-A-D-O-W, yeah, Dadow. Dadow. So Anne was born 42 minutes older than Allison. And growing up, the twins had always been super close, not only because of like the twin cliche, but because their mother died suddenly in 1983 when they were five years old. There's another Whoa. parallel to your story, five years old. Yeah. And the pain and grief of this brought them even closer. Um, according to an article by Loretta Pulaski on Inquisitor, their father, a doctor, indulged his twins and older daughter, Amy. Oh, there's the other sister. Amy. Holy crap. <laughs> You're kidding me. They all and now our seventh a. little sister. We're presenting her to you. And it's wow. Okay. Ariel. Wow. wow. I wasn't expecting that. Somehow I wasn't You really prepared. weren't expecting me to sing a version of Little Mermaid at After some point. After all that, I somehow hadn't mentally prepared myself for you to actually sing it, which, wow. Okay. That's again, not, that's not on me. (laughs) That's not on you. That's on me. And I fully take responsibility. Um, so anyway, they have an older sister named Amy who just like never really shows up much anymore. So she's just kind of that sister, uh, which is probably for the best for her. Um, but so the father, their father, a doctor, Triton, Triton. (laughs) (laughs) you know, Dr. Triton uh, indulged his twins uh, and older older daughter, Amy, as they grew up in Hartford, New York. As high schoolers, they were given thousands of spending dollars, like thousands of dollars of spending money. Um, and they wore designer clothes, including Chanel and Armani. Um, meanwhile, I remember saving up for a pair of <laughs> Converse that I bought out of a magazine, like a catalog, oh. I mean. <laughs> I did that with a, um, it's not clothing, but you know how everyone at the time, and by the way, still should be, but no one is obsessed with um, blow up furniture. Like I, <laughs> God, I yes. fucking loved blow up furniture. I don't know why people stopped using that. Because it but- doesn't work. Um. It worked fine for me. And the the one that I got had like, um, like a, it was fuzzy. So it was fuzzy blow up furniture. What? I've never it was heard of such a thing. the best. It came with a little hassock. Oh my God. It was so nice. That was the what thing. What kind of I furniture remember. was it? Inflatable. No, but like what piece of furniture? It was like a, like a chair, like beanbag size chair with a little foot thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Cause I'm picturing, I don't know. I feel like those little sofas never like stood the test of time. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Fuzzy inflatable. I'm pretty sure I've seen chair. it at your house. In maybe I, don't... I saw something inflatable at your house once but i guess that could have been a lot of things it could have been many things <laughs> yeah i don't know where it is but it's it's too old i don't even know if there would be a picture on the internet at this point of it well did you buy it out of a catalog because i uh, we bought it out of a pb team my friend yeah i think shut so shut up maybe Pretty that's sure. why maybe mine were all just really dollar store trashy ones that's why they didn't last but oh PB i team loved was expensive oh my god pb team i Every time a catalog came to the house, I lost my mind for PBT. I did too. I, I remember I got a quilt once from PBT and like, I, we still have it. Um, and it was like the hugest splurge ever. Cause shit, shit's expensive. That PBT, even now what? it still exists. And I sometimes buy shit from it. I still um, have, uh, when I go home, the, the bedspread I use is the one I got from PBT and I refuse to get rid of it. It it's was really like, nice stuff. So cool looking, but it's expensive. <laughs> 
Um, anyway, cattle, I, I read recently that like our age is like, it's, it's a really narrow window of people who, of adults who remember, who grew up using the internet, but remember a time before the internet, which is like a very specific window because yeah. we grew up using it and we, we adapted to it like as it grew, but then we also remembered when we couldn't depend on the internet and like oh, had to absolutely buy things from catalogs and shit. I remember so it's a cool like I remember when I was 10 I had to go I mean the internet was like I'm not saying the internet wasn't there but like not everyone had a computer in their house like there mm-hmm. wasn't like if you used the internet it was at a library maybe if your library had internet yet or your school and everyone had there was like a computer in the school mm-hmm. that had that had internet so like every single person in the school who wanted to do their homework or had a project had to share or like check out time, like slots for the computer. Yep. And I remember I had to do a project about tractors and we didn't, <laughs> we didn't have the internet to use. And so my dad just took me to Lowe's. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just, that's how you learn. I don't know. It's better was, than going to the library to read books. You actually about, get to go to Lowe's and look at tractors. I think he knew he was like, you are not going to go to the library and actually genuinely <laughs> and retain information about tractors so <laughs> about just go farm look at a tractor. Tools. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway <clears throat> so, so anyway fun fact about our age is that we are the only ones to grow up using the internet but remember a time before the internet and that's never going to happen again because yeah what people... a weird little niche yep good for us okay so good for us um anyway they had chanel armani etc i had one pair of vans that i was really proud of <laughs> and a quilt from pbt <laughs> oh that's um, where we were oh yeah that's yep. where we were uh a former schoolmate remembers they'd wear gold and carry 800 hundred dollar wallets uh wow 800 so wait the thing that you're using to hold your money costs yeah that much man money. Ooh, my I- chanel or some shit Meanwhile, in high school, we, another craze that I hopefully never comes back. And duct we tape were, wallets. I had a duct tape wallet. I knew yeah, it. I did too. Um, I had a Daniel Radcliffe duct tape wallet. Oh, I was that, that kid. There was always one kid at school who made and sold duct yes. tape wallets for other people. I made all, all the duct My tape My friend wallets. Minji made them and she made me a, Harry, a Daniel Radcliffe one. Love it. <laughs> It's a, it was a good, it was a good business. Good it was side a, gig. <laughs> a short lived gig, but wow. Like that was a way to make some, some what a weird cash. talent that you have. Um, <laughs> it's better than a rag ball. Okay. It's at least more useful. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to Azuria, Azuria, Azaria, 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 uh, no Azarina, Azarina. None of the things I said. Fantastic. (laughs) Um, So at high school, others remember that they mostly kept to themselves. All their aspirations were intertwined because they were that close. They both originally wanted to become neurosurgeons. Uh, Then both of them were on the cheerleading squad. Both joined the Navy JROTC. And in their downtime, they'd attend parties together, smoke cigarettes and pot and drink a lot. Okay. So. As one former schoolmate recalled to the Daily Mail, while others partied at the weekend, they pretty much carried it on all week. Those were the days when everyone drank Zima, which uh, I've looked this up once before. Do you know what Zima is? Mm -hmm. It's like the early example of like a a wine cooler. Like, um, oh, okay. It had like 4.7 to 5.4% alcohol. It was a 90s drink. It was an alternate, like an alternative to beer. Okay. That would be marketed toward like young people teens partying <laughs> did what yeah. did, we had we had like fruit coolers fruit. like smirnoff ice and like this shit Mike's like hard or Mike's something. hard exactly and they had uh zima so okay when the twins graduated from uh, high school in 1996 the whole family packed up and moved to florida where they went to college so i guess that's a tight-knit family um mm-hmm. <laughs> once graduating ann and allison moved to palm beach And they launched a yoga studio in Palm Beach Gardens called Twin Power Yoga. Oh, fun. Fun. Uh, According to Daily Mail, they had a philosophy and they called it yoga life. Okay. (laughs) And Anne told the Boca Boca Raton, is that how you say that? Boca Raton. I I think I'm pretty sure it can be used interchangeably because I've heard, I say Boca Raton and Boca Raton. Okay. I'll just say Boca. 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 (laughs) Okay. (laughs) In downtown uh, West Palm Beach, blah, blah, blah. So they told the Boca Observer that clients declare goals, both spiritually and physically, uh, when they come in to be clients at the yoga studio, 
And they then help these clients make up their own affirmative mantra based on their spiritual goals. Seems like a lot of words that don't totally make sense, but you know, whatever. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it started off as a huge hit, uh, so much so that it opened a second location in downtown, uh, downtown West Palm beach three years later, and then had plans to open a third studio in Boca soon after that. Wow. They were the talk of the town. They drove matching Porsches. So they were like that, that pair of folks in that they, they were sisters, but also identical twins and drove matching luxury cars. Like it was just a whole, they were like fresh out of a movie. Like, yes, yes. They were characters. Exactly. Uh Exactly. And interestingly that you say that, uh, there, they had a spiritual advisor, (laughs) don't worry about it named (sighs) Leslie McMichael. Okay. And their spiritual advisor, uh, described Allison as the twin with the big dominant personality and Anne as the sweetest, kindest, most level-headed person you could ever meet. And Anne becomes Anastasia later and Allison becomes Alexandria. Just sure. So some people did not like them in that sort of way because a local tabloid called gossip extra called them the terrible twins of yoga. Um, so they were kind of, they were characters, but like they were, hmm not necessarily the most popular. They, they were like notorious in some circles, I guess. Gotcha. Um, so oxygen reports that in Palm beach, the twins were observed fighting violently at times, uh, including in the car while one of them was driving. Oh my God. One of Anastasia's ex-boyfriends, Keith Weiss remembers, uh, that Alexandria would often tag along on Anastasia's dates. And there was a lot of jealousy between the two sisters. Jeez, that sounds like that um, my strange addiction episode where they the twins were addicted to each other and like <gasps> would go yeah. on dates together and like measure out their foods. So they'd look exactly the same and all that. Oh God, I don't even know if I saw that. If I did, it, it was, was pretty with you. wild. <laughs> it was pretty wild. Anyway, um, but yeah, so they had a lot of jealousy between them and a lot of infighting. Um, Keith was a chef from Florida who dated Anastasia for about six months. And during that six months, he got a glimpse into their relationship and told People Magazine later, I once got a call from Anne saying, get over here now. I'm going to kill her, Weiss recalled. (gasps) She actually started hitting Allison with the phone. I heard it. Thump, thump, thump. They were both screaming at each other. I get to their apartment and there's broken glass everywhere from wine bottles and shattered glasses. There was blood every everywhere and the bedroom door was falling off its hinges. Holy both shit. Both of them were sitting on the couch when I walked in and they were like, hey, how you doing? Uh, what? <laughs> that sounds like such a like a like a classic trope of a toxic family of like you just oh, walk in like into the percent. aftermath and they're all giggling and having the a good siblings time. just sitting there like yeah. whatever <laughs> like also, i'm missing makes... chunks of hair <laughs> <laughs> and then that also makes a lot of sense now why later on one of them was charged with like second degree yep. murder because i was like yo they could just been driving a fucking car like nope. now it makes sense now okay i'm <laughs> seeing just I'm... do simple things like drive a car um, it's piecing things together now. yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so allison uh, according to weiss allison had a bruise on her face i asked them if they were okay and they were like oh yeah we're fine we're just watching a movie yeah we were just playing you know scrabble <laughs> or something and it just scrabble. got really intense boggle got out of hand and sometimes that happens in the best yeah. of families okay yeah you get it uh, meanwhile, all around them, it's total destruction. They seem to not know they wanted to kill each other just minutes earlier. Like wild, wild. Yeah. So, uh, Weiss also told the Palm beach post that he nearly crashed his car in 2001 when the twins threw a tantrum while he was behind the wheel because he refused their pleas to stop for another glass of wine. Oh, <laughs> so, hmm. um, yeah, hmm. this behavior was often dismissed as just like, oh, they're just siblings they're just twins they're just kind of like ruffling each other's feathers and they always make up afterwards so it was often dismissed even though it was like like you said extremely toxic yeah because of their lifestyle and success and clearly all the drama they attracted their spiritual advisor leslie said hey i have a good idea why don't you join a reality tv show (laughs) wow okay hmm for a spiritual advisor he's pretty savvy I have to say, you know, I will say I, when I first moved out to LA and I was like, what the hell am I going to do with like a psych degree? My first thought is I wanted to be one of the people who like vets people for (gasps) reality shows because that would be a quite a cool job. 
Cause you do have to go through a process where they have to make sure that you're like mentally stable enough to handle yeah, it. Yeah. Like healthy enough. Yeah. I thought that was like such a cool gig. I thought that was going to be like my forever job where I was going to like, just talk to people and like, give them the green light or not on whether or not they could even audition and then go to happy uh, hour and tell everybody like, guess what I yeah. heard today <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, or whether, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's, I, I'm curious to see what the person whose job it was and met them. If maybe I guess they were like, Oh yeah, you can go. And like, just didn't really care. I don't know. I just know that that's part of the process of getting onto a reality show a lot of the times. And so I wonder if they played a cool or not with that person. I don't know because don't know. they said yes. Uh, <laughs> and the studio said, or the producer said they got producers attached to the idea. And then the producers pushed them to rent a bigger space for a new studio. And then the series fell through. Oh, so it didn't okay. even happen. But gotcha. because they had been pushed to buy a new studio, they were suddenly $300,000 in debt. Uh, so Yikes. they had to quickly close their businesses in 2014. And they fled to Utah, supposedly leaving some of their employees unpaid and changing their names to Alexandria and Anastasia. <laughs> I see. And that's where the name change comes in. Okay. Yes. And now they, they were claim. Like- running <laughs> yeah but they claim that they changed their names not because they were hiding but because they were looking to publish some books and they were being harassed by strangers in utah and it's what? like that's a, a weird excuse um and they yeah. changed their last name from dad out to duval by the way so it's alexander and anastasia duval uh okay. so they claimed it was had nothing to do with uh hiding from people but it's like mm, you abandoned your post and changed your names and moved to utah i don't know yeah, sounds like fishy. Me. Yeah, sounds fishy. So, fun fact: in their new yoga studio in Utah, uh, they were trying to launch something called Doga, which was yoga for dogs. <laughs> Precious. No, I was like, actually, I'm kind of on board board with that. Uh, however, they didn't learn anything from their Florida experience because suddenly they were having more run-ins with the law. Uh, a vehicle homicide investigator named Larry B. Kraft uh, later commented on how one occasion the twins were kicked out of a restaurant for allegedly drinking too much, fighting with each other, and threatening to have the mafia kill the owner of the restaurant. Oh my God. <laughs> Which is like the Whoa. Utah mafia that you know so well after just moving there. Yeah. Like, okay, who are these fucking people to be like, <laughs> I know someone available right now, ready to kill in it's this going town to I just you. moved to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in Utah. And also uh, like, if you're trying to keep a low profile, <laughs> this ain't it. Girl. No, no, like, you're not doing a good job. It <laughs> didn't work. This is not it. Um, in another incident in Utah, police of the twins fought with each other, including pull, pulling each other's hair out after the car slid off the road into a ditch. Uh, when later confronted about what happened in Utah, Alexandria commented, I don't know. I don't think that's true. (laughs) So, Uh, so we're just like very much ignoring like some, some real signs that you need help. Yeah. Either ignoring it or like blacking it out. I'm not sure. Like, cause they were also drinking. So it's like, who knows? Oh, right. Right. If but like was, they didn't wake up the next day with like a bald patch and be like, where'd that come from? Or like, well, I why like do I such a part of their uh, normal behavior with each other anyway? I guess so. Yeah. A lot they of gave people me like just, bald patch. <laughs> just wake up with bruises and shit. And they're like, I have no idea where it came from. So oops. Um, nope. Well, that was not because oxygen reports. They were also involved in a non-fatal traffic accident where Alexander was driving, lost control of the car. And when police responded, the two girls were still fighting. Um, and then Whoa. Alexandria was arrested then and there for driving under the influence. And then they decided, Utah, we've seen enough. We've had enough. We're moving to Hawaii. So that was their stint in Utah. It seems quick. And then in December 2015, <laughs> they decided they would go to a more spiritual place and they moved to Maui. Okay. Okay. You know, they're very spiritual folks. Well, I mean, they had yoga and dog yoga, so Doga. they've proven themselves. <laughs> so according to In Touch Weekly, as soon as they moved to Maui in search of spiritual enlightenment, they were soon arrested for disorderly conduct and terroristic threatening. <laughs> what? Oh my God. Get it together, folks. What is happening? I don't know. Say that again. Something in terroristic, <laughs> terroristic. Okay. What? It's my favorite sentence. According to In Touch Weekly, as soon as they moved to Maui in search of spiritual enlightenment, they were soon arrested for disorderly con- conduct and terroristic threatening. So just like the exact opposite of like peaceful spiritualism what they're seeking, while we're at it. Like, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Um, they're 
<laughs> desperate for something I don't They're think they could get. They're a mess. Wow. Okay. Anastasia's boyfriend of about a month, Federico Bailey, testified that booze changed them. Wine seemed to fuel their fights. Uh, Bailey claimed the twins who have been described as so close, they not only finished each other's sentences, but felt comfortable showering together and wearing each other's clothes, brawled quite often every two or three days, they punched each other. That's according whoa. to In Touch Weekly. I feel like they're punching each other a lot. Like I'm saying, whoa, like I'm surprised anymore. And really- they're very physically violent with each other. It's, it seems it's that way. It seems yeah, that way. Yeah, they're very abusive toward each other, which is scary. Um, Federico Bailey did affirm though that they were great people when they were sober, but the minute they started drinking, they were like Jekyll and Hyde. Oh. Yikes. So on the day of the fatal crash over the cliff, you recall, you recall, I, uh, I recall, I recall. <laughs> the Do sisters... they recall? Cause they seem to be not recalling no. a lot of shit. <laughs> no, the sisters were fighting as well. Uh, and oh. we know this because witnesses spotted them as Alexandria was driving her sister down the Hana highway. They all noticed how Anastasia was violently grabbing her sister's hair as Alexandria drove the car. Uh, wow. Anastasia was grabbing her hair. Lawrence Lau, a local said, my first thought when she was coming past us was don't hit me. Don't hit me because she was slightly out of control. She was doing 40 miles an hour from a dead stop. At that point, I saw a pair of hands jerking her head, pulling her hair. Her head oh was jerking. So like uh-huh. they were violently fighting as she drove. And suddenly in the blink of an eye, the car launched off the side of the cliff and plummeted 200 feet below. Oof. Wow. Maui police officer Ian Custer, who was one of the first on the scene, later commented, maybe 10 feet more to the right, and it would have been in the water. So they <gasps> landed on the land, um, but they could have 10 feet to the right would have been into the ocean. And is that, I don't know if this means anything, but does is that implying that like they would have survived or because I feel like I'm if you still hit the water assuming that means I thought it meant both of them would have died but I don't know like I, I assume it would be worse because they could have drowned because mm. when they were at the bottom and they were rescued or you know the one was rescued she right. was still alive but I don't know if that would have happened if the car sunk into the ocean I don't know okay but you're right I, I actually have no clue if it's better or worse to hit the ocean <laughs> than the ground I imagine if you're falling that fast into from something that heavy into yeah. the water you're you're still hitting pavement basically you're still hitting solid basically i feel yeah. yeah no i'm with you it doesn't sound like an easier descent um yeah it sounds all bad all very bad it all sounds bad um so as mentioned before anastasia who was in the passenger seat was pronounced dead at the scene alexandria was airlifted to the maui memorial medical center where she was hospitalized with severe injuries um, it also didn't help that her blood alcohol content was three times the legal limit. Ooh, um, holy so she shit. was very intoxicated while she was driving. And that's according to Medium, an article in Medium. Um, in the hospital, she was visited by police officer Justin Maliola, and he revealed to True Crime Daily, quote, she didn't really want to say much to us at the hospital. She remained pretty defensive on questions. Her initial reaction to us coming was, why are we there? She seemed pretty disconnected from the whole scenario. We ended up having to tell her what happened to her sister because she refused to answer any more questions from us. I remember her just having a real blank look on her face. It was actually pretty bizarre from the normal, her face, just a blank stare. That's weird. I mean, it's all, but also not not judging that, you know, people grieve differently or handle shock differently, but I kind of, I, I mean, I mean, maybe I'm like overstepping here, but is is she going to get a diagnosis at some point? Like, because the the amount that she's just like either forgetting or like completely dissociating away from or like removing herself from the narrative yeah. is like kind of jarring. Yeah, I don't. Not that we know of. Not that it's wow. written anywhere. So I mean, I should have gotten that psych like, PhD, and you could tell us. <laughs> <laughs> you and my mother both say that. Um, ah, no, not no. when she's in the limo on the way to our live show in DC that she booked. That was herself. the one time she was fine with me not having gone for when the she booked her own limo for your cul-de-sac and didn't invite me. No, by we the weren't way. invited. <laughs> I didn't even. I found out after she got the limo, and the she most- also had a. A keg of vodka. Yeah, she brought there. solo cups to the show, to our live show. Good times. She's Linda. a mess. I miss her. No, I mean, I do understand if she fell like and hit her head during this crash that she would have some right. memory loss. But I feel like the recurring theme, I feel it's like every pattern. five minutes you're yeah. saying like, oh, something like really brutal is happening. And she's just like, 
smiling around like he's like what happened. do you mean yeah you're yeah. totally right I feel like a lot of this violence is just ends with like what are you talking about everything's fine it's like yeah uh... to a point where like I mean I've heard it enough times as a stranger if I were her friend I'd be like yo are you okay like <laughs> like what's going on like I'm scared to get in a car with you let alone like be yeah. in your presence yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so yeah apparently according to Maliola um the the detective what was even more bizarre is that when he talked to the twins' father, his first words were, if anyone should have died, it was that bitch Alexandria. <gasps> Whoa. Are you serious? Yeah. That's so, not a cute look. Not a cute look to say to the police after your daughter is killed and one's in the hospital. Yikes. I would have just arrested him on the spot. I would have been like, been like you like- are yeah causing like, trouble this sounds not good this sounds no. like no, no 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 no. this might be the origin of some problems i think maybe uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah bingo so and alexander was the one who sur- uh who survived so when he says if anyone should have died it was her like it's the one who survived which is like what the fuck wow. who says that about their child like be um, grateful like one of your kids yeah. is alive right now oh my yeah. god yeah you'd think so wow. And so in thinking about how Alexandria didn't die in this fatal fall, Maui accident investigator, Sergeant Lawrence Beecraft went back to the crash scene with crime watch daily. And I've, I've told you about crime watch daily before, but this is the show, uh, that Chris Hansen hosts. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like the true crime show that I sometimes watch on YouTube that Chris Hansen hosts. And it's just like a fun little crossover because I know you love Chris Hansen. (laughs) I was going to, I was about to interrupt you and say like, oh, don't talk to me about like going oh, on YouTube and watching Chris. Hansen I know that's why I always bring I it up. I love that man. I love Chris Hansen. I know you do. Um, <sighs> so he hosts the show and it's always very fun and cheesy. Um, but so uh, they went back to, so this investigator, this crime scene investigator goes back to the crash scene and mm-hmm. he explains the reason why she survived is that she's in a compartment. She's behind the steering wheel. The airbag deploys. It keeps her in the seat. Anastasia was not contained in that her area was bigger. She also had an airbag in front of her side curtain airbags and airbags coming out from the seat. She was bouncing around in that area. Um, and in uh-huh. his point of view, this was intentional. There was no uh-huh. luck involved. This was not an accident. This was not a traffic crash. This was a criminal act. Wow. So he is going out and saying, no, she did this on purpose. (laughs) Okay. Launched herself off a cliff knowing that she would survive. I I don't know. Um, That's, that's a lot of confidence. That's a lot of, it's a really risky choice of like, I thought maybe I'll make it. Maybe not. (laughs) However, according, yeah, exactly. Like a risky choice on her. Yeah, exactly. Um, but according to the guardian computer data revealed that Alexandria had accelerated and made a hard turn off the cliff, which led cops to believe it was an attempted murder suicide. Whoa. So they decided, we think that Alexandria went off the cliff knowing both of them would be killed. <gasps> and since she survived that it would still be a crime because you are murdering the other person. If that makes uh-huh. sense. Yep. So yep, even yep, if yep. she didn't know she would survive she did survive and she killed her sister. So that's kind of where they stand. Oh, um, so <laughs> with this in mind on June 3rd, 2016, while Alexandria was at the seaside hotel in Maui, she was arrested and held without bail for second degree murder. Authorities had become suspicious of her because as soon as she had left the hospital, she tried to book flights <laughs> out of Hawaii and back to the mainland. And they were like, mm, let's keep her here. <laughs> I was like, mm. I think you need to just take a, just stay at home for a day or two. Maybe just Just, sit down for a second. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Months later, I don't know, sorry, five days later, she was released. And then months later in October, a grand jury indicted her and she was brought back. She was in Albany, New York at this point. She was brought all the way back to Hawaii and held on $3 million bail. And uh, she faced trial in January of 2018 for the second degree murder of her sister, Anastasia. And this was in 2018. And ABC News reported that prosecutors have argued that Alexandria intentionally drove the car over a cliff, citing evidence they claim shows she did not apply the brakes, but rather accelerated while driving on the narrow winding road, allegedly taking a sharp turn toward a 200 foot drop. So they're basically saying like, based on tire tracks and all this business, you can tell that she sped up the car. She was approaching the cliff. Interesting. That I... The education that goes into learning all that tiny little stuff is so fascinating right? to me. Like, and the fact that I, like people can figure that out based on like 
tire it's wild and stuff i i wish there was like a you would think with all the craze of like true crime someone would have opened up like a school of like learn all the fun little things you know <laughs> learn all the fun little things well maybe they exist but they're not called that i don't know yeah maybe they're called like detective school maybe or something they're called like university <laughs> but it's i like, don't know i mean like i i don't know i i think of like if there was someone out there who was offering a class to, like people who even if they didn't plan on going into that profession but just like wanted to learn the skill set of like how to investigate like yeah i don't that would it would sell I'm just I assume, saying it would sell. because I've read a lot of people say they've changed their majors or gone back to school for forensics I think it is a pretty common thing I think it's a growing field from what I can tell anecdotally speaking from comments and reddit and stuff it seems like forensics is like a very a rapidly expanding field because it's so popular um yeah. but who knows? Let me know, folks, if you're studying forensics or all the little fun things that I'm I know. About. Well, well, I, I know, uh, to be fair, I know a university like classes are like valid, but I'm thinking more if there was like a like um like an adult summer camp or something, but it was just like forensics camp or like, you know, Ooh. it's not like not necessarily something you're not totally looking into actually being a detective or anything, but this is just your niche interests and you can go like solve a crime, but learn all these things first. You know, I think that'd be fun. That would be fun. Um, I think it'd be fun. I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure someone with clear a, that this certificate you get at the end of summer camp does not mean you like, can go to definitely. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you just basically like took a crash course for purely novelty sake for entertainment purposes know. only. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, if it if that place existed, you and I would have definitely bought tickets to oh, it by now. I think absolutely. So, uh, just I like ghost hunting, like if people don't totally want to always be a ghost hunter, but if there was a place or a camp where you could just like go play with equipment and learn the science behind it, people would do it. I think. Yeah, so. absolutely. All right. Anyway. Well, we can invent. Sorry. Tam 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 tam. Um, all this all the cool little things. Can't summer camp. Okay. We'll call it, and that's why we summer. And that's why we summer in the Hamptons. Not uh, <laughs> with our duct tape wallets. Uh, yeah, classy. That's the AF. that's the elective. That's the elective. Oh my god! Yeah, that's the people who can't pass into like the advanced courses. <laughs> they just have to take duct tape wallet class or do like that thing with like all the plastic string and you make the lanyards. <gasps> you know, macrame. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun time. <laughs> That's an actual summer camp though. Like I think that's I know. what actual summer we, camp like is. the elective, the random additional class would be like, okay, we've been learning a lot. This is your recess. We'll do actual summer camp. We'll stuff. do some we'll do arts and crafts for a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So they're saying, I don't even know where the hell I was. Oh, she's I'm so sorry. No, no, it's not you. I, I, I'm sure I derailed. They're facing, oh, so they looked at the tra tire tracks and stuff and said she clearly accelerated off the cliff and took a sharp turn. I did. Um, yikes. So she went off the 200 foot drop intentionally is what they're saying. And in terms of motive, Maui police detective, Sergeant Gordon Sagoon Jr. commented, I believe that Alexandria did not want to lose her sister, Anastasia, because the plan was that Anastasia and her boyfriend, Federico, were going to move, start a business on another Island. And I believe Alexandria did not want that to happen, that she was not going to lose her sister to anybody. And she potentially oh. drove off that cliff to stop that. Wow. So that's the motive that they're arguing, that the police are arguing. Wow. Um, was why she drove them both off a cliff, which is like, wowza. That's, wowza. that's okay. I mean, I, get, I, it's pretty dark. Yeah. And also I guess it kind of goes with the, how heated their arguments have been. Like, it would make sense that they also have like a really like odd attachment to each other yeah. or some sort of like heightened protection of like you can't do anything without me kind of stuff. I mean they showered together like regularly as like they went on dates together some year olds yeah yeah they might one of them might have been they might have been a little possessive of each other yeah it I seems think. like an unhealthy attachment again this mm -hmm. is novelty speaking I don't have the degree I have the summer camp degree of psych <laughs> summer camp degree but it seems unhealthy to me yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that was the motive they were arguing. Alexander's defense attorney, Bernie Bervar, insisted that it was just a tragic accident. Um, with testimony from plenty of witnesses, it was very clear that the twins had been seen arguing in the car moments before they sped off the cliff. Uh, like I said, witnesses saw Anastasia pulling Alexandria's hair. 
which led to Alexandria losing control of the car. And there was mm. evidence to support this claim because a clump of Alexandria's hair was found in Anastasia's hands. After oh, okay. she was killed. That'll do it. Isn't that horrifying? I, that's really awful. Ugh. So like she literally still had like clumps of her hair in her hand when she died. Um, so that really proved awful. that she was ripping her hair out uh, while she drove. So another person who took the stand was Anastasia's boyfriend, Frederico, who himself is like a really weird character, which at this point, not surprising, I guess. But um, apparently they met, he and Anastasia met 35 days before she died. And strangely, after Anastasia's death, he lived in her Porsche until police took the vehicle. Like he just moved in to the car. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if it was an SUV or like a two seater, but it doesn't but seem. But he just moved in. He just lived in it. Um, in. Okay. Why not? How uh, long? Do we know that? How- you know what? I don't know. It just says until police took over control of the vehicle. So I don't know how long that was. Because that could have been like a weekend or it could have been like a while, <laughs> like you know, half a year. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure. I assume it was longer than a weekend. It seems like things always go very slow in these processes, but I don't know how long. Um, okay. According to ABC News, when asked what he did for a living, Bailey said he was a minister and is his own church and depends on Jesus Christ to provide for him so he doesn't have to earn money. Uh, hmm. So that's why he lived in the Porsche. Hmm. Uh, he okay. also said he had previously been living in his Jeep, so I guess the Porsche was an upgrade. Uh, and when they met him, the sisters invi- or Anastasia invited him to come live with her and her sister and because he was living in his Jeep at the time. So during the trial, Bailey, a.k.a. Frederico, brought up how seven days prior to the death, Alexandria, who's the driver mm-hmm. and not his girlfriend, his girlfriend's sister, Alexandria informed me that she was going to kill her sister. And then she said it again, but she said it in a different way. She said, I killed my sister as though it had already happened. Oh, like a week in advance. Yeah. So That's is it far. almost planted that like... I don't like know. Like she was already dead and put her in the car and then tried to drive her off the cliff. No, like she was alive. Like they were still da- like he was still dating the other one. Anastasia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That tracks. Yeah. So uh, she was, she just said it, even though it wasn't true. She said, I killed my sister as though it had already happened. When asked why would she want to kill her sister? Bailey responded, well, she didn't really say why she wanted to kill her. When asked if he had any suspicions as to why, he responded, well, there was a lot of jealousy there between the two of them. Even though they were listed as identical twins, they didn't see themselves as identical twins, and they actually resented the idea. But according to, which is like, okay, but according to Bailey, he claims to have also heard Alexandria saying to Anastasia, don't forget, we're leaving the planet on the 30th. Okay, so... And I want to just add that the, the, the car crash was on the 29th. So I don't know if perhaps it just happened a day early and because she got fed up and drove off the edge of the cliff thinking like, well, we might as well do it now because according Uh to Frederico, he believed that was uh, evidence they were planning on suicide, Um, Uh like double suicide. So who knows? But when I went and looked up the timeline, I was like, well, the car crash happened on the 29th the day before the 30th so it's weird timing to me wow yeah okay i really can't wrap my head around i know it's so bizarre it's a lot and it's so bizarre i don't really know i'm i'm feeling more and more affirmed in the fact that like they needed some like psychological Mm -hmm. help okay Mm -hmm. okay yes i mean i don't disagree with you there um, so that was shockingly not the only odd behavior that Federico slash Bailey had spotted, uh, after Anastasia's death, while Alexandria was at the hospital, she apparently put on her dead sister's dress and started flirting and cuddling him. Uh, oh, oh, what? Wait, <laughs> yeah, what? That's what okay. he said. Okay. Uh, okay. He told the New York Post, she began cuddling up on me. It seemed like she was flirting with me. She sat down beside me really close and laid her head on my shoulder. She put on Anastasia's clothes. I started talking to her about what happened. She avoided answering any of my questions. When I saw her in Anastasia's dress, it was disturbing. Anastasia had just worn that a few nights earlier. But at the same time, like they already did wear each other's clothes all the time. Sure. So it's like, it's the flirting with the boyfriend that is a little odd. Yeah. And to be fair, that was his statement to the New York Post. I don't know. Sure. 
what he can con- what constitutes flirting like maybe sure. she just wanted a hug I don't know but I don't know yeah he said it was weird so I guess I'll trust him okay um and back to the trial Alexandria was found not guilty of second degree murder fun fact not guilty okay huh. so she was not found guilty was there murder. a reason or like uh well the judge agreed that Anastasia had caused the accident by attacking Alexandria in the car. Okay. So basically the argument was Alexandria may not have driven off that cliff if Anastasia hadn't been ripping out her hair and attacking her while she was driving. Okay. So, I mean, I, I feel like that's a fair argument. Yeah. That makes sense. I think, I don't know. <laughs> it's such a weird story. I I'm know. sorry. It is weird. It's, it's all over so the place. weird. Um, Alexandria first spoke about what happened publicly on an episode of Dr. Phil. It's always Dr. Phil. Oh, it's always DP. (sighs) Trying to remember what had happened on the day of her sister's death. She said, it's really hard for me to put it completely together, but I do remember my sister and I were driving around. I've played it so many times in my mind, having that wheel go out, hitting the dirt berm going over. I don't, I don't know why I'm here that I survived what happened that day. An accident happened. Um, she also says she just remembers being airlifted and she didn't learn of Anastasia's death until she was in the hospital. Um, and during that same interview, Dr. Phil also grilled her about the details of her and her sister's kind of sketchy past Mm -hmm. and like, you know, filing for bankruptcy in Florida, changing their names, keep being arrested in Utah. Yeah. Um, But Alexandria, all of it, all of it, there's a lot, (laughs) all of it, but Alexandria blamed the bankruptcy on one negative thing that had been said on social media about their yoga studio. And she said, it, that's why our yoga studio failed. Cause somebody posted something mean about us on the internet. And it was like, okay, I don't think that's right. But people say mean things about us all the yeah. time on the internet. <laughs> I so like, I should we change our names and move to Utah? Like, I mean, I'm-, I'm not like above it <laughs> <laughs> i'll be christopolis you be emothy and nobody will minute. ever know <laughs> nobody will figure it out even for a second <laughs> <laughs> um so alexander duvall has always maintained her innocence although many have doubted it there isn't much to say about where she is now because she's kept a really low profile can't really blame her um in 2016 however the older sister amy the one that finally we haven't talked about was on probation for assaulting their father who oh. uses a wheelchair in his apartment in Palm Beach Shores, Florida. And according to John, the father, who was 67, she came to the house intoxicated and started verbally abusing me, saying she would never leave the house until I gave her a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. <clears throat> I don't okay. know. It's just so odd. It, it definitely things. sounds like it's not just the twins, then it's like a whole family it seems of to be, events. Yeah, and the yeah, and the father, this is the father who said that bitch Alexandria should have died not the other you know what I mean like yeah none of them sound like they love themselves doesn't seem like a happy family in any way yeah um so uh in an update about Maui itself they have now erected a concrete barrier along that cliff so oh well you know probably for the best (laughs) probably the only like really good thing to come out of the story but that's the very odd story of the Maui yoga twins case I feel like I need to sneeze and it's just not going to come. Yeah, like, I've, yeah, yeah, like yeah, I've, yeah. I feel like I'm stuck in this weird space of I wanted closure and I didn't get it. Mm-mm. At no, least it it's wasn't bizarre. as, at least it was bizarre. At least it wasn't as dark as some of your others, mm-hmm. but certainly bizarre. I usually, I like to even like play like the theory game and like try to solve the crack the case myself. I don't really know where to go from I know, there. It, it just sounds just like it gives me a headache, honestly. It just sounds like a really unstable family that needed help and didn't get it. Yes. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, And the fact about the driving over the edge of the car still doesn't answer it to me because it's like maybe they were planning to die by suicide the next day. Maybe it was an accident because her hair was being ripped out of her head. I don't know, but it was clearly born out of something very toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Or even like, I would argue that maybe like the hair ripped out of the head might've been like just panic from falling. Like your instinct is to grab something. Well, remember that guy saw them driving and said that the one sister was pulling her head back by her hair. Right. Right. So they had had witnesses who actually saw her hair being pulled Mm. as they drove. Wow. I don't know then. Yeah, Yeah. It's all pretty bad. It's just kind of a bummer, you know? It is. 
Wow. Well, anyway, that's I don't that. Know. Uh-huh. I wonder where to go from there. Oh, oh I do. I'll tell you how big my baby is. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me put down my cup. Okay, you'll like this. The plate of spaghetti from Lady and the Tramp. Oh, this isn't is that so cute? Sweet. I, I like, like that. I like it, and I. But I'm also like, I'm not vibing with the fact that whatever this app is is really guesstimating sizes because <laughs> like, like nobody like, knows. Well, it's just a normal plate of pasta, or know, is it different? That's why it cracks me up because it's so specific, and it's like you couldn't possibly know from an animated film. <laughs> about two dogs how big that plate of spaghetti was between them it just seems like what is strange did you talk to the prop master on set no because there was no prop master because it's a cartoon (laughs) that's a good point it's like what's it's just so it's a bowl of pasta like why'd we have to make it about lady in the tram because it's funner that way but then it makes me think like maybe i was unaware this whole time that lady in the tramp is known to have like a bigger plate of pasta than the average person (laughs) is it like what about like ratatouille ratatouille, how's this it says 18 inches okay thank you an 18 you. inch bowl of pasta and then that makes me question like am i am i not eating enough you're pasta? not even because, eating like, enough we're none of us are eating enough sp- spaghetti is what i'm learning from this because now i need to go find like an 18 inch dish and really go to town oh, on fun some fact, pasta. Uh, i finished that cake before we started recording it's empty now i ate the whole thing <laughs> no comment just the plate is empty i was like fuck it so i you know <laughs> when you make a plan god laughs as they say <laughs> and when i became friends with you i had a plan that one day when you got pregnant and finally had the level of hunger that i do on a regular basis yeah. we would finally live in merriment it's and tragic it's tragic that we're and then so you said away. i'm gonna move across the country and i went oh my dreams are shattered so okay but then the universe said also we're gonna release a virus into the population that prevents everybody from hanging out so to be fair think of all the sandwiches we could i eaten, know christine you have to get maybe pregnant again again maybe no thank you maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's uh maybe it's just too dangerous like the world knew this is just too the world much knew. maybe it was our guardian angels being room. like don't even fucking think about like, it like talk about going bankrupt our postmates bills would have been like <laughs> through the roof <laughs> every time you would have been like cheesecake or brownies and i would have been oh like oh my god Porcano los dos like i don't get it <laughs> <laughs> oh we would have been a disaster it would have been like i would have tried to expense we would try to expense everything and it would have just been cheesecake and it would have been a disaster um oh i want to add one more because there's also 80s and 90s nostalgia uh so mm-hmm. on that app or on that section uh the babies aside, now you're gonna hate this a moderately successful game of jenga what the fuck does that mean <laughs> it means it's not the full tower it's like you're like halfway through playing for someone who's like obsessed <laughs> with semantics and shit and like little details but and that's like, why it cracks me up because it's so absurd it's like a moderately <laughs> and so but like still the full set of jenga yeah like still no no because like jenga. people have, you've pulled out a lot of the pieces you know yeah but the point of jenga is to keep it the same height the whole oh, time i guess that's fair so even if it's moderately wait, you know what? You're completely right. It's literally the same height no matter what. Wait, There's just that's holes hysterical. in your baby. What does that mean? Maybe it's really pointy, which makes sense because I really can't breathe very well. So it it's could that just one, be sharp. one little toe that's tickling you. Stop <laughs> the very doing top. that. <laughs> it's the a moderate it's uh, it's like probably I feel like I am how my parents felt when I showed them cards against humanity for the first time and they're like why is that so specific and why does it just fill me with rage I like think that's why it makes me laugh so much is because I'm like it's so stupid like whoever wrote this clearly knew what they were doing and I think it's brilliant and they <laughs> piss off a pregnant person except I'm not the pregnant You're not person the pregnant one. <laughs> okay but if i were the pregnant person and that was the app i was using deleted immediately okay I to be fair like, i use like is- 85 different apps but this is my favorite one um so- okay but see the other thing is like the fruit gets so annoying because every app is like like this week it's a pineapple and then the- i was like but two weeks ago the other app said it was a pineapple like it- that doesn't help Ooh. me any because fruit is also different sizes right so- but like the animated bowl of spaghetti totally does it for you <laughs> I get yes, it. Cause at I least it. that's a very specific thing that changes every week. I don't need to like 
be like two uh, weeks what? ago it was an avocado and now it's another avocado maybe it, it only exists that app though because it has no other frame of reference there's no other app saying that it's it was a, it was pasta last that's week. exactly right it's 80s 90s nostalgia very specific genre that nobody else is trying to copy when um, were you a bottle of wine what was that about oh yeah that was on my bump app yesterday it said fun fact or daily fact the baby is as tall as a bottle of wine. I posted that on Instagram and tagged M, obviously. Amazing. Uh, I was like, well, that is something I can gauge. That's something mm-hmm. I can relate to. <laughs> You're so. like, I have held a bottle of wine many <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that I can get a grasp in my mind of how large and how hefty and how much it's hurting me inside. Well, <sighs> perfect. Anyway, well, I fact. hope you go enjoy your baby full of holes or whatever. My the, moderately the Jenga played. thing. <laughs> moderately enjoyed game of Jenga. And uh, I guess is that it? <laughs> yeah, that's it for me. I'm going to go search PBT now and just feel jealous of all the kids that get to go. Sp- I'm going to send you a picture shopping. of my office chair because I bought that. No, my desk. I bought that off PBT. It's a teenage oh my desk, God. but it was expensive as hell. And I was like, well, it's a nice desk. I don't know. You know, I'm a sucker for a backpack. I'll probably just go buy one right now. So, <gasps> oh, yeah, with your monogram on it. Oh, ah! okay. And that's why we drink. <laughs>